All right, so all you amazing POCO X3 Pro users for YU and Beam out there around the world. Yet again, we have a brand new video for a brand new update for Pixel Experience based on Android 11. Now, why am I covering Android 11, you ask? Well, because Android 12 is great, excellent. The ROMs are good. Everything is great. But hey, there are some things which are broken. There are some things which are missing. And there will be times when you would want a custom ROM based on Android 11, which you want to rely on, which you want to use as your daily driver, which should give you decent performance, great battery life and overall a good good feel and experience as far as the software side is concerned that is the reason we have in store pixel experiences latest update of december with a december security patch we're going to review this particular rom today we have the benchmark numbers the battery statistics and the overall opinions for you so before we get into the details if you haven't already please subscribe and hit that notification bell icon because it doesn't cost you anything and it really motivates us to make amazing content like this if you think you like chatting with like-minded people please join us on telegram because we have more than 1500 people actively chatting over there you can follow us on instagram twitter and facebook for exclusive updates and if you think the hard work is worth the effort well please click on the join button and support the channel now without further ado hello awesome people welcome to phone Ops. my name is kalash let's get going All right, so let's see what we have here. Pixel Experience Official, this is the name of the maintainer, POCO X3 Pro. This works on Vayu and Bima. This, of course, is Android 11, and the build date is the 16th of December 2021, so it's really recent. You do have the normal and the plus version as well. Now, the changelog says December security patch updated translations. So there is nothing that has changed apart from the latest security patch and language translations. Now, the notes do say OS is based, include GApps, firmware 12.0, SE Linux is enforcing, safety net should be passed by default, don't PM the dev and report the bug. Now, flashing pixel experience on any particular device is fairly simple. It's not a complicated affair. And the moment you boot into this particular ROM, you will see that you get a very, very clean UI with a dark Google search pill at the bottom. You will have your assistant shortcuts from the left and right. If you go ahead and enable them, they should be working just fine, as you can see. So if you swipe from the top to bottom, you do have your Android 11 quick tiles. Now, remember, these are not your Android 12 quick tiles. So they look very different compared to Android 12. It's been so many days that we've been using Android 12 that Android 11 looks sort of dated and sort of old, but you know, don't mistake it for an old version because it's fairly recent and the ROMs based on Android 11 are rock solid, super stable is what I can say. Now you get very, very few quick tiles over here, including screen recorder. So if you look at screen record over here, you have internal and external audio. You start the screen recording, you get a timer. Right now we are looking for stutters and jitters because remember, as I said, some things are still broken in Android 12 custom ROMs. This is one of those. If you go to Android 12 custom ROM and you use the screen recorder, you will have stutters and jitters. But look at the smoothness in Android 11. It's just beautiful, including the screen recorder. So let's go ahead and stop this and let's increase the volume so that we can see how good the recording quality is. Clear very very clear very very beautiful very very usable so that's the beauty of android 11. i'm not saying android 12 is bad but you have to live with it till the time it becomes rock solid stable and by the time that happens it will be two to three months now as i said to the left you have google feed which is running butter smooth and it's always a good experience even if you go to the home screen the transition is very very smooth and very very cohesive right so that's something really really welcome and really really good to see now apart from this if you press and hold on the home screen you have home settings you have your standard pixel launcher which works fine no problem whatsoever you have your android 11 widgets doing a great job and then you have styles and wallpapers the old one with curated culture you don't get monet ui so your quick tiles color won't change automatically and stuff like that as you can see but that's okay now as far as the camera situation is concerned this rom comes with a very very basic camera application i know i don't know what the complications are but you should try to include google camera go because that at least gives you a chance to go ahead and make some use of the built-in camera rather than going and hunting for a gcam by the way like this video and let me know in the comment section if you would like me to make a video on the best gcam for this particular device now moving on pixel experience being pixel experience it comes with bare bones applications no drama nothing going on at all very very few apps and that makes this rom very very fluid and very very smooth so if you see over here extremely smooth multitasking working like a breeze screenshot option working absolutely fine including the expanded screenshot 
So let's see here, you have the select option doing a great job. So all the multitasking features are working, including split screen. So no problems there whatsoever. Now, if you go to settings over here and you go to about phone, you go to Android version 11, you will see that this comes with a perf kernel. Okay, and it comes with Android 11 with a December security patch, which is always a welcome addition. Now, there's not much to talk about when you go to the settings of a Pixel Experience ROM. Reason for that is it doesn't really come with any customization. The idea behind Pixel Experience is to give you a bare bones, smooth, simple UI with good performance, right? So what matters for us over here is the battery life and the optimization profiles. So if you go ahead and see over here, I've set it to performance, but unfortunately, you don't have a game mode, you don't have 180Hz touch sampling rate. So for you pro gamers out there, this might be a disappointment. But let's see here, let's go to battery usage, let's go to show full device usage. We've been on battery for one day and 12 hours, right? And let's see if we have screen one hour and three minutes and we are still at 53%. So the standby is pretty good. The battery backup in terms of screen on times is pretty good. You have battery percentage option enabled over here. So those basic functionalities are present. And moving on, if you actually go to say security, you will have face unlock, which is again a thing which is not available in Android 12. Apart from this, if you actually go to system and you go to advanced, you will have things like gestures over here. So you have the power menu, show device controls, hide device controls. So, you know, all these options, all these features are present. They work cohesively. They work absolutely fine. If you're going to ask me, do you have Google Photos unlimited storage? I don't think you have that. I'm not going ahead and check that. Now let's quickly talk about the charging speeds. The charging speeds on the 33 watt charger for this particular device on this ROM are really, really good. No problem whatsoever. You will get around 27 to 28 watts of charging. If you talk about the important aspects of this particular wrong we're talking about safety net so safety net passes by default if you consume a lot of hd content on your device you have drm info drm info wideband l1 is present no problem whatsoever and let's go ahead and quickly talk about the benchmark numbers for which we have the gallery application or we can go to photos so the CPU throttled to 92% of its max performance and the average score was 183 to 75 GIPS. That's a very, very good score. And the maximum score was 193, 737. Now you'll tell me that you've seen scores higher than this. Well, trust me, for a balanced, good performance, this is really, really good. If you further go to Geekbench, you have 762 single core, 2533 multi-core. The multi-core is a little low. I saw the K20 Pro score, a higher multi-core score there. Um, let's go to Antutu, 9 Antutu you get 574, 567, that's very close to stock ROM but with next level smoothness and beautiful app icon animations, this is really really good. So you know Bluetooth using the camera with Gcam, all the other functionalities and features have not had any problem. You can definitely go ahead and use the latest version of Pixel Experience as a daily driver. Let me know in the comment section what do you think about this video. Until the next one, this is Kalash signing off at Phonox. Keep smiling. Take care. Bye.